Hello, Dan Adolkowski here from howtomechatronics.com. In this Arduino tutorial, we will learn how we can make this cool Arduino game, actually a replica of the popular Flappy Bird game for smartphones, using an Arduino and a TFT touchscreen. The game is quite simple but interesting and addictive. Using the touchscreen, we control the bird and try to avoid the moving pillars, which speed increase as we progress. Also, the game can store your highest score even if you unplug the power. In the previous tutorial, we learned in details how to use TFT touchscreens with an Arduino and we left the game example to be explained in this tutorial. So now, just like in the previous tutorial, we will step by step explain the code behind the Arduino game. We will use the UTFT and UTouch libraries made by Henning Carlson. You can download these libraries from his website rinkydinkelectronics.com. Also, we will use the EEPROM library for storing the highest score in the EEPROM. The EEPROM is a memory which can store data even when the board is turned off. After we have included the libraries, we need to create the UTFT and UTouch objects as well as define variables needed for the game. In the setup section, we need to initiate the display and the touch read the highest score from the EEPROM and initiate the game using the initiate game custom function. So with this custom function we will draw the initiate state of the game and here's how we will do that. First we need to clear the screen, then draw the blue background, draw the bottom section, add the text and call the draw bird custom function to draw the bird. After this, we need a while loop, which will prevent the game to start until we tap the screen. So while we are at this state, if we press the upper right corner, we can reset the highest score to 0, and if we press anywhere else on the screen, we will get out of the loop and get into the main loop of the code, which will start the game. Here first we have the XP variable, which is used for drawing the pillars, as well as the YP variable. At the beginning, the XP variable has the value of 390 as the size of the screen and the YP variable has the value of 100, which is the height of the first pillar. Each iteration, the value of the XP variable is decreased by the value of the moving rate variable, which at the beginning has the value of 3 and as we progress the game, it increases. Here's the working principle of the game, we have 50 pixels wide pillars which move from right to left and every next pillar has a different random height. In order to make them moving, logically, after each iteration we need to clear the screen and redraw the graphics with the pillars at their new position. However, we cannot do that because of the low refresh rate of the screen which would cause flickering of the graphics. In order to activate all of its pixels, the screen needs a bit more time, so therefore we will have to improvise and redraw just those things that are moving. So let's take a look how the draw pillars custom function will do that. It takes the XP and YP variables and using them and the fill rect function it will draw the pillars. So each iteration it draws the pillars at their new location with additional blue rectangles from their left and right side which clear the previous drawn pillars and in that way we actually do the improvisation of just redrawing the moving pillars. The if statements here are an additional improvisation because for some reason the fill rect function didn't work if its x2 parameter had a value out of the screen size. Also, at the end of this custom function, we need to print the value of the reached score. Back in the loop section, we have the yb variable, which is the y position of the bird and it depends on the falling rate, which after each iteration is increased and in that way we get the effect of acceleration or gravity. Next are the collision checks, with these if statements we can find the bird so that if it hit the top, the ground or the pillars, the game will over. Next is the draw bird custom function and let's see how it works. The bird is actually a photo which is converted into a bitmap using the image converter 565 tool made by Henning Carlson. The .c file which is created using the tool needs to be included in the directory so that it loads when launching the sketch. 
Also, we need to define the bitmap like this and using the draw bitmap function, we will draw the photo on the screen. The bird has a fixed x coordinate and a yb variable as y coordinate. Similar to the pillars, we will clear the previous state of the bird by drawing two blue rectangles above and under the bird. Back in the loop, we can see that after the pillars has passed through the screen, the xp variable will be reset to 319, yp will get new random value from 20 to 100 for the height of the pillars and the score will increase by 1. With the next if statement, we control the bird. If we tap the screen, we will set the falling rate to negative value what will make the bird jump and the else if statement will not allow that to happen if we just hold the screen. The last if statement is for the difficulty of the game and it increased the moving rate of the pillars after each 5 points. Ok, what's left now is to see how the game over custom function works. After a delay of 1 second it will clear the screen, print the score and some text. If the score is higher than the highest score, it will write it down into the EEPROM. It will reset all variables to their starting position and at the end it will call the initiate game custom function to restart the game. That's all and I hope the explanation of the code was clear enough. Thanks for watching and for more tutorials and projects, visit my official website howtomechatronics.com.